Climate change is pretty much at the forefront of everyone's minds, but one day we may see it come to an end. Hello YouTube and welcome back to my channel. My name is Cody and today's video is going to be a little bit different. In honor of Earth Day, I want to take a look at some growing trends that could contribute to the end of climate change in our lifetimes. I'm going to investigate everything from population dynamics to new technology so that we can have a better understanding of the potential future of the environment. I'm expecting this video to be fairly controversial, however, so there are a few things that need to be said before we begin. First, climate change is real. You would be hard pressed to find a topic that has as much universal acceptance in the scientific community, and most anti-global warming research is flawed at best and funded by fossil fuel companies. Secondly, the findings I'll be presenting in this video aren't an excuse to be more wasteful. Instead, they're intended to give us hope that there's still a chance for redemption. If we change our habits and attitudes now, we could still reverse some of the harm that billions of people before us have caused. Now this first point that I want to discuss is something I only learned about in the last year. The general opinion is that the number of humans is just going to keep growing until we exhaust all of our natural resources. I mean, just look at this graph that shows the human population throughout history. But this assumption is actually completely wrong. To help explain what I'm talking about, I'm going to pull some diagrams from a textbook for a class I'm currently enrolled in. This is the demographic transition model. The blue line is birth rate, the red line is death rate, and the black line is population. When a society undergoes industrialization, there's a sharp drop in death rate, while the birth rate remains mostly stable. That's what's happening here. When this happens, the population of a country skyrockets, which is what the black line is showing here. But then something interesting happens. Birth rate falls back down to match the death rate, at a lower level than before. When this happens, the population stops growing and plateaus. Now you may be wondering why the birth rate falls back down, and it's because social norms change when advanced technology arrives. While it may have been popular to have three, four, or five children in the 1950s, today's society makes that option both unpopular and expensive, so most couples opt for only one or two children. That mindset changes a growing population to one that stays stable. But after the population plateaus, something even more interesting happens. It starts to decline. That's what's happening to Hungary, where the death rate is higher than the birth rate, and it's gonna happen to the Americas, to Europe, and to Asia, at different points in the next 100 years. The only place that's going to escape this trend is Africa, where industrialization is starting to take a hold and who will grow by billions of people in the next century. So what does all this mean? Humanity isn't going to grow out of control. Instead, our numbers are going to start to decline. The world population is expected to peak in the 9 to 10 billion range, and then it's going to steadily fall after that. The problem of the next century won't be too many humans. It'll be too few. Countries will try to entice immigrants to come join the workforce and encourage citizens to have more children, but robots will probably need to be implemented to fill all of the required jobs. All of this is to say that the future is not bleak over population, and the world's resources won't be steadily drained because there's too many humans on the planet. Less humans will require less resources and produce less in emissions, but green technology is advancing more and more every year. One growing industry is meat alternatives, which promise to cut back on the insane land and water usage and methane production of traditional livestock farming. It all started when Impossible Foods figured out a way to make heme iron in a lab. Heme is the molecule that makes blood red and meat taste like meat, and Impossible figured out a way to synthesize it from the roots of soy plants. By adding heme to their plant-based burgers, Impossible has created a patty that cooks and tastes just like normal meat, but comes at a fraction of the environmental cost. And they aren't the only company working on meat alternatives. Beyond Meat is another producer that recently partnered with Pepsi to bring plant-based snacks and drinks to the general public, and new startups are joining the industry every day. As people get more accustomed to plant-based products in their kitchens, the environment may start to recover from the harm associated with mass livestock farming. That's not even taking into account the growing industry of lab-made meat, which provides customers with real animal products, again, at a fraction of the environmental cost. Clearly, there's a revolution brewing in the food industry that promises to change the way we eat in favor of more healthy and sustainable products. But food isn't even the biggest change we might see. That lies in energy. Wind and hydropower are entirely sustainable and will be cheaper in the long run than fossil fuels. But solar will likely be the future. Solar panels get cheaper and more efficient by the year, and it's no longer an uncommon sight to see houses with roofs covered in them. But the main use for solar will be one that hasn't gotten much media coverage yet. Solar panels in space. Basically, it works like this. Scientists will launch solar panels into space 
and orient them in strategic locations where they'll be hit by sunlight every second of every day and they'll collect higher energy particles that are typically filtered out by the Earth's atmosphere. The solar panels will then convert light energy to high energy microwaves or to lasers where it will then be beamed back to Earth and picked up by a receiver, converted back to normal electricity, and then supplied into our power grids. This will create a network that requires no wires, can be used to beam energy anywhere on Earth, and will produce more energy in a single year than fossil fuels have ever produced in the entirety of their existence. And while it may sound far-fetched, the Pentagon just successfully completed their first tests of the system, and other countries are researching the method as the key to the future. The industrial and computer revolutions advanced our technology by leaps and bounds, and the coming revolution in energy will similarly affect every layer of society. One of the main ways will be our automobiles which currently produce 20% of the United States carbon emissions. The success of electric vehicle giant Tesla has inspired every major automobile manufacturer to dip their toes into the electric and hybrid vehicle markets, and even Apple is starting to work on their own electric car now. With such a massive influx of cash coming into the industry, it's only a matter of time before a company solves the ultimate puzzle creating a battery that could go for thousands of miles on a single charge. This will be the catalyst that powers the electric takeover of the auto industry, filling our roads with affordable cars that have no carbon emissions. Combined with the solar panel technology that I just mentioned, it's my opinion that we one day may have electric vehicles with energy receivers on top, effectively creating a car that never needs to be charged. Why would anyone buy a gas-powered car when something like that's available? Now, all of this is very encouraging, but the most important factor when it comes to climate change is mindset. We need to change the way we think to make lasting improvements, and there are encouraging signs that this is starting to happen. Gen Z is the most environmentally conscious generation the world has ever seen, with a majority of people saying that protecting the environment is a core value, but it's not just us. Two-thirds of Americans today say that the government needs to take aggressive action against climate change, and that belief is being reflected in President Biden's infrastructure bill. And while it may come as no surprise, the US is actually moving much more slowly than the rest of the world. India and China have invested billions of dollars into green technology, and they've literally made the earth more green today than it was 20 years ago by planting so many trees. It's pretty likely that those countries will become the first to use green energy to provide for their citizens, which is encouraging because they have the biggest populations in the world. As Americans, it's necessary that we pressure our politicians into implementing green policy so that we don't find ourselves left behind in the next few decades. There's a lot of hopelessness in my generation. Most people think that there's no way out of the problems that we face, and no matter what we do, it'll be too little, too late. But these trends show that there is hope for the future. We stand at a crossroads right now. We can either continue to pass the buck and eventually reach the point of no return, or we can start making changes today to provide a better and cleaner environment for ourselves and for our children. I'd like to end today's video with a story about Carl Sagan. Perhaps one of the most talented astronomers the world has ever seen, Sagan had a special gift for explaining complex physics and astronomical phenomena to the public. In 1990, as the Voyager 1 space probe hurtled away from Earth, Sagan requested that its camera be turned around and one final picture be taken of our planet. As he put it, this pale blue dot is the only home we've ever known. And that's what is at stake today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys again soon.